As a coach, you've got to get your head wrapped around that it's not your job to make your players happy. Now, a lot of coaches think they should be making their players happy. Don't get me wrong, I want them to be happy. That's not my job. As coaches, we also sit there and we say, we want to be liked by our players. Guess what? That's not important either. What is important is that at the end of the day, our players have to know that I love them. To have a hard conversation with the Kelly Bates, I mean a really, really hard conversation, and getting her to understand that being coachable is giving another person permission to demand the very best of you. By having those honest talks, she allows me to go in there and give her the responsibility to respond right away. The way that I want her to respond. The way we need her to respond. Because at the end of the day, she knows that I genuinely care for her. That I love her. For players, it's not important that they like you. That they have to know that you care about them for more than just what they can do on the court. Our preseason rank this year was number five. We were the most overranked team in the history of rankings. You, you see us, and our ranking is five, then seven, 11, 18, 23, and it's just dropping, man. Guess about how much time we spent worrying about that. About as much time as we spent thinking about being unranked, then 25, 14, six, two. Don't worry about it. We focus on getting better. As coaches, we must enjoy and embrace the process of learning, the process of improvement. That's what's critical. We talk a lot to our players about, how are you going to respond? It's a phrase they hear me say all the time. How are you going to respond? How to respond appropriately to adversity, to success, setbacks. To me, that is really, really big. You've got a player like Tiana Williams. Tiana is a player that I'm so stoked about because here is somebody who decided to look herself in the mirror when things got really tough and made real changes. The season as a freshman, she was an honorable mention All-American. <laughs> My goodness, she wasn't even an honorable mention in our gym for the first part of the season. But when it got hard, we were able to have those conversations with her and help her through it. She, I mean, she really started flourishing, and it really became fun to watch her as the season progressed. I think many of us as coaches, we give up with our frustration during matches and tournaments. You guys know what I mean. I mean, I, you see coaches just sitting there, and they, they're up for most of the match, and it gets tight, and they get behind. Now they just go sit down, and they put their, their chins on their hands, and their elbows on their knees, and they're giving up and due to the frustration. They're not willing to stay in the fight. We don't get our players to understand it and embrace this thing. That sometimes, sometimes the other team is, is playing pretty well. And sometimes your team hasn't figured it all out. So what? So what? What are we going to do now? Well, we're gonna find a way. And that's what you gotta get across to your players. If we find a way. You get hit, cool, hit them back respond. We can't afford to spend our time wallowing in our anger, pouting, because everyone is going to be missing the bigger thing. It's spending energy and being angry rather than getting better. So coaches, I mean, we talk about that concept with our team a lot. I'm asking you, you need to embrace this. You need to talk to your players about this. As players, as coaches, don't get angry, get better, get determined, be resilient, stay with the fight. Because one of the greatest feelings in the world is when your back is against the wall and you come back and you set the world on fire.